forgot all about what I did last night. What I do remember that it was real, real life. Talks about me are never good. I don't live like the way that I should. Oh well, I'm in for some fun tonight. Just leave me alone. I'm on the show. Hello, my friends, Eric Worre here. Welcome to day two of our GoPro three-day presentation challenge, teaching you how to become a world-class presenter to be able to totally <clears throat> master these fundamental skills. And I'm excited to be able to, to uh, share with you today, chat with you today, and work with you on some of these things. And before I do that, Yesterday, we got started with this process, and um, we asked everybody, first of all, to learn the structure of telling their story and to go out there and share it and use the hashtag my story to do that. And I saw hundreds and hundreds and I don't know, probably thousands of you telling your story and it was so powerful and so exciting and so inspirational 
uh, for you to do that. So I'm, I'm excited for you. We're going to talk a little bit about that. We're going to talk through these other aspects that, um, that Pat's going to be sharing with you in a moment. Um, but before we really kick this off, I want you to do me a favor. Yesterday, we had some giveaways, and we're going to be announcing those giveaways soon. But if you smash the share button, we're going to put you into a drawing for 10 free tickets to GoPro 2021. Okay, $500 ticket value. Smash the share button. It's all you got to do. Let people know that this exists and you'll be put into the drawing for that. Uh, let people know that this is happening. Okay, um, <clears throat> we sent the word out. We're you know, trying to inform as many people as we possibly can to be able to do this. Something like 120,000 people watched the presentation that we, we put together yesterday. That's now gone. And today, we're going to give you a great training experience of furthering the conversation. And that's going to be available, available for the next 24 hours. So make sure you, um, you smash the share button, you tag people into the comments. And also, how many of you have took the challenge, accepted the challenge, and you filmed your story and you posted your story? Put story in the word story into the comments if you did that. If you posted your story, I want to see in the comments how many of you posted your story. Um, <clears throat> and while we're waiting for that, because there's a little bit of delay here, I also want to tell you about tomorrow. Tomorrow, day three of this three-day presentation challenge, we're going to invite you backstage. And we're going to have a a much more intimate conversation about how you can create a signature talk, a keynote presentation talk. And you might not even think that, that that's even possible for you to be able to do. I promise you it is. And we're going to take you backstage and have a personal uh, experience doing that. So <clears throat> some of you are still working on it. Some of you said I did it. Some of you are going to do it today. That's all great. Um, so anyway, <laughs> Uh, oh, I have grandkids and not a second to do it alone, but I'm still going to do it. All right. Fantastic. Wonderful. So with that introduction, I want to uh, bring the speaking whisperer of all speaking whispers, Mr. Pat Quinn, to kind of set the stage for today. And then we're going to get into some training on the other, uh, the other presentations that you need to master. We started with story yesterday, but the other presentations we're going to talk about. So Pat, Take it away. Hey, thanks, Eric. And this is so great to be here today. I've been watching so many of your videos on Facebook. Kelly, I've watched yours. Sarah, I've watched yours. Juanita, I watched yours. It is great to see so many people. And to the person who said their grandkids are with them, why not film your video with your grandkids on your lap? Why don't you show a little bit of that personality, show a little bit of what's going on in your life, show a little bit of, of you, because the best videos aren't a script, the best videos aren't memorized, the best videos are you being you. And so I love the fact that so many of you submitted those. I've watched a ton of them. I'm going to watch a ton more tonight, and uh, we're going to have some to showcase for you and show to you as the week goes on. And so fabulous that you are here. Yesterday, Pete Vargas showed you the pyramid. The communication pyramid, it's all about effective communication. And that's what these days are all about. How can we make you the most effective communicator? Because we know when you are an effective communicator, that is the route to quickly growing your business, quickly growing your team, and having the impact on the world that you know you can have. And so there are five presentations in this pyramid that Pete walked you up through yesterday. Yesterday, we talked about this first one, the bottom of the pyramid, the base of everything is your story. It's so important that you know how to tell that. Uh, you can tell your upline story or your story. We're focusing on your story and the presentations that you posted on Facebook are your stories and I love it. You should be able to do that in two minutes or less. You might even get that down to under a minute as you get better and better at it and do it more and more. But this is an essential story for you to be able to tell. And I'm so glad that so many of you were here yesterday as Eric walked us through the four parts of that story and how to tell that story every single time. Now, 
Right above that are three other presentations that we're going to focus on today. Today, we're going to focus on the business opportunity presentation that you would give. And this is exposing other people to a business opportunity. Then two trainings for your internal team. One training is you're getting started. When you do bring a new team member on board, how do you get them started? So you can take advantage of that enthusiasm that they have in the beginning and actually equip them to be successful right off the bat. And the third one above that is some more advanced skills training, specific skills that you might want to help them with specific skills on social media, specific skills on, uh, on giving presentations as the one skill we're going to talk about today. What are the skills that you want to equip your team with? And today we're actually gonna spend some of that time talking about how you can duplicate your presentation with your team. And so that you're not the one person who can be a good effective communicator on your team. You actually have a team full of people who are all effective communicators and who are all helping their teams be effective communicators. That's one skill that you advanced skill that you have. So today we're all about these middle three presentations right here. And then you don't want to miss tomorrow. Tomorrow we are going to talk about your signature talk. And I believe your signature talk is the presentation that's going to blow this whole thing up. Your signature talk is the presentation that's going to get this beyond your friends and family, beyond the industry, and expose you and your products and your business opportunity to people who've never heard of your company, never heard of network marketing. This is the one that takes it out to the masses, and this is the one that can create massive growth in your company. Uh, and so we're going to spend tomorrow talking about the signature talk. So today we're all about these three business opportunity presentation, getting started when a new team member comes on, how do you train them? How do you present to them? How to get started and advanced skills training, which can be a different skill each time you do it. But how do you do that effectively so that you're not the one that everybody had and all, all traffic shouldn't have to flow through you. You should not be the one that has to do it every time. You can equip your team and give your team the skills to do that. And so if you are all in for today's training, why don't you type into the comments, I'm all in. I want to do this. I know this is going to be life changing. And Eric, I know you've talked about these five presentations so many times. Today, we're going to focus on these middle three. And these middle three can make all the difference in the, the rate that a business grows and how fast it grows in that process. So Eric, uh, you're, you're going to talk about some of these right now. Yes, thank you so much, Pat. I really appreciate it. I'm really looking forward to you teaching people because you've helped me and so many others inside of our profession to learn how to be more effective communicators. <clears throat> Pretty little speeches change the world. Pretty little presentations change the world. Uh, learning how to effectively share what it is that we have with the world is critically important. And that's what this is all about. So thank you for smashing the share button. Thank you for typing, I'm all in. And if you're getting value so far, put it this way, if you're getting more than what you paid for, smash the love heart button. Let, let me see in, in, the, in the emojis, go crazy with the emojis. And uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna jump right in and give you some value, okay? So excited to be able to do this with you. I gotta tell you a quick story. <clears throat> I told you yesterday that telling my story, if you notice that I'm starting this training with a story, <laughs> um, that's all we do. We're storytellers, well-paid storytellers. That's what we talked about yesterday. The learning to tell my story was the first thing that gave me confidence to go out there and start making connections with prospects. It was a liberating experience, totally changed everything. The second thing I needed to do was learn how to give an opportunity presentation. How do you give an opportunity presentation that works, that duplicates, that is effective? And the first thing that I did uh, is the, the number one earner in the company that I was with all the way back in 1989 gave the same exact presentation every single time, word for word. And even though he's making this huge money, he never really changed it. He kept it simple. He said, the prospect doesn't change. 
He said, prospect stays the same. You know, just, if, if the presentation's effective, then just go ahead and give that presentation. So here's what I did. I recorded his presentation on audio and I wrote it down on a legal pad, word for word for word. And I recorded my own voice doing the presentation on audio. And I listened to that audio like 500 times because I was insecure. I, I did not feel confident. Uh, I did not feel like I was natural, a natural born leader or anything, but I felt like here's what went through my mind. I'm introverted. I'm nervous. I'm scared. But if they gave me an opportunity to appear on a national television commercial and they would pay me $100,000 a year in residuals for being on that commercial, I could learn my lines. I could learn my lines and I could shine up and I could put a big smile on my face and I could do whatever they needed me to do. I could prepare enough to do that thing, learn my lines to be able to get the payoff. I, I, I don't believe that we're, that we're procrastinators and I don't believe that we're paralyzed by fear. What I believe is, the payoff in our mind is not big enough. And when the payoff is big enough, then all this stuff gets easy. So I, I finally got the payoff big enough in my mind that I was willing to learn my lines. So that's what I decided to do. I practiced over and over and over learning my lines of the presentation. And here's how I tricked my head into, into figuring out the opportunity presentation, which is the second presentation we want to share with you. I tricked my head into doing it by pretending that this was a one person play. This is like a, I was giving a monologue. I was doing a little one person stage, uh, you know, community theater thing. And I was going to perform my little performance. So it wasn't like a business conversation at all in my mind. In my mind, it was a performance. And that was what kind of got me past my fear to be able to start. And what I want to give you today, I mean, it would take us more time to customize a presentation for you, exactly, but I'm going to give you an outline that has worked for me for the last 30 years. Um, it's worked around the world. It works with every culture. It will work with every company. It'll work in every environment. This opportunity presentation is what I call a perfect presentation. And like I said, if we had more time, I would, I, I, I could help you script it word for word, but I'm going to at least give you the outline of it. Okay. So if you're taking notes, do me a favor, take those notes and put those notes into the comments and I will give you this outline. And then you can start to write your own, fill in your own blanks. Okay. Point number one in a perfect presentation is an introduction. This introduction needs to be designed in a way that causes the prospect to say, oh, this might be worth my time. You have 30 to 60 seconds to capture their imagination and to get somebody to say, oh, this might be valuable. This might be interesting. And all right, I'll listen. You have to set the stage. You have to let them know what to expect in, in regards of time. And you have to let them know what to expect in regards to what's in it for them. Understand? So this introduction is really, really critical. It's, it's, it's designed to capture their imagination. Part two is your story. The reason why we said story, you know, you can tell it in a minute. You can have a one minute version. You can have a two minute version. I mean, if, and I'll talk about it later, but the, the reason why you need to keep it brief is you got to think in terms of what's in it for them. You're going to be building trust. If you do an introduction, you quickly tell your story you've now set the framework for a person to be able to have the ability to hear what you have to say. This is so critical that you quickly 
set the tone, tell the story, and they're leaning in, as Pat would say. They're leaning in to hear more about what it is. Even if they're emo you know, kind of postures like this, they're still emotionally leaning in. All right, next is what I call the five key elements section of the perfect presentation. The five key elements. And I will tell you, I'll give you a little bit of the scripting is of exactly how I set up these five key elements. So I intro, tell the story. My five key elements go something like this. In evaluating any business, what I've learned from experience is you need to take a close look at five key elements of that business. And if these five elements are in place and you feel confident on those five things, then you can move forward in your due diligence to, in, in figuring out if that business is a right fit for you. So let me describe the five key elements. Now they're going, huh, what's the five key elements? Element number one is the product. Let me describe to you the five key elements that you would need to evaluate in looking at any business. Number one, you need to take a look at the product. And in taking a look at the product, you need to ask four specific questions. Question number one, is the product, is there a need for the product in the marketplace? Does the world need this product? And this thing is glaring a little bit, so they're having a hard time seeing it. You can see it on the screen? I know, I'm seeing that they get to see PROD. They can't see the rest of this because of the glare. And, oh, oh, okay, good. you can see it. Good. Cool, cool, cool. Number one, is there a need for the product? And you have to evaluate this. Is there a need? And we, you could talk about it and fill in the blanks on what you believe the need of the marketplace is. Number two question, does the product meet the need? Does it solve the problem? for people. Third question you need to ask when it comes to product is, is it priced to sell? Is it competitive in the marketplace compared with the, the, the qualities that that product bring to the world? Is it priced to sell? Will people pay that price to solve that problem? And question number four, you need to take a look at, is it priced for profit? Is there an opportunity to, for you as a business owner, the company that's representing that product to be able to make a business out of this product? Is it price for profit? Is there enough margin in order there for it all to work? So now you fill in the blanks of your product. Here's the need. Here, here's the need that's in the marketplace. Here's how this product meets the need. Here's why it's competitively priced, and here's why there's enough margin in order to be able to make it worthwhile for people, and then describe your products, okay? So next element on the five key elements, next element is the company. You pivot and say, if you become comfortable that the product is a solid offering in the world, then the second thing you need to take a look at is the company itself. Do they have what it takes to last in the marketplace? Do they have what it takes to be able to deal with change? Do they have what it takes when it comes to experience? Do they have the money? Do they have the management experience? And this is where you brag about your company. Here's all the awards that they've won and here's the experience that they have and here's all the infrastructure that they put together and you know, here's all the cool things that they have and, and, and are. Then you say, if you feel comfortable that the product is, is solid and the company is set up for the long term, third thing you need to take a look at is the compensation structure. Can you make money? They might be the best product in the world and the most incredible company in the world, but if you can't make money, it's probably not a good business opportunity for you. But 
in looking at a compensation structure, and I always would, I, I would usually summarize the compensation when I was giving a presentation because most people aren't going to understand the compensation. I would say, if you're taking a look at a compensation structure as an entrepreneur, you need to take a look at three different situations when it comes to compensation. Number one, can people make money quickly? Can they get involved and make money quickly? Because speed is so important for the small entrepreneur, the work at home person. The, if, if you can have ability for a person to be able to make money quickly, then you have a chance of being able to build a longer term team with them. But they got to be able to make money fast. Two thing, the second thing you need to take a look at in compensation, if a person puts in a reasonable part-time effort, can they build a reasonable part-time income? You know, is there an opportunity for somebody to work with a reasonable part-time income and make a reasonable part-time, uh, uh, excuse me, effort and make a reasonable part-time income? And then the third thing you need to take a look at, especially if you're like me, it's great for people to make money fast. It's great for people to make money part-time. But is there an opportunity if somebody really goes after this to be able to make big money? Not a claim and not a promise, but is, is it real? Has it happened? Is it possible for somebody who really goes all out? So what you want to look at in looking at any compensation structure, does it answer those three questions? Can people make money quickly? Can people make a reasonable part-time income with a reasonable part-time effort? And is there a big opportunity for entrepreneurs? Now, if you, feel, if you get your questions answered and you feel that now you're going to brag about your compensation structure, brag about your product, brag about the company, brag about the compensation structure, then you're going to say, now, if you feel comfortable that the product meets your criteria, uh, your, your entrepreneurial criteria, if you feel com comfortable that the company has what it takes to go long term, and you feel comfortable that the compensation structure is at least interesting enough to learn more, the fourth thing you need to take a look at is support. In typical entrepreneurial ventures, you are all the support. You have to do everything. You have to be everything to everyone. But the one thing that's cool about my company is they provide back office support and warehouse support and research and development support, customer service support, technology support. They provide training. They provide tools. They provide websites. They provide this and this and this and this and this and this and this. So the old cliche, you're in business for yourself, but not by yourself. The company will support you with a bunch of things that you don't have to pay for. You can leverage your time. So not only is there a great product, incredible company, unbelievable compensation, but there's support available so you don't have to do it all and be everything for everybody. Now you can really leverage your time. Is this making sense to you, this presentation? I will tell you, this thing is thermonuclear. It is unbelievable. It's the best that's ever been created. It's awesome. You get them to agree that the support is unprecedented, amazing, spectacular, unbelievable. And then the last thing is timing. In real estate, they say a lot of times it's location, location, location. In business, many times it's timing, timing, timing. And what kind of timing story can you tell? And you can tell a timing story no matter what the timing situation is from your company. You can make a case. If you're a legacy company, you've been around for forever, you can say the timing is we have the stability of long-term service to the world, and yet we still have only captured a small portion of the market share. The big growth is yet to come. Or you could tell a time story, we're brand new, and because of that, you have that opportunity to totally capitalize, right? Or you're in the middle, you could say, hey, the risk has been sucked out because we're not just a startup, but we still have upside. It's the perfect scenario. So tell the timing situation as you see it with your opportunity. So then summarize. 
as I told you in the intro, if you're going to look at any business, you got to examine five key elements. The product, I think you'll agree with me that the product meets the criteria in evaluating any business. The company, the company's solid, they'll figure it out. The compensation plan, it takes care of people with many different um, focuses and, and, and uh, hopes and dreams. The support is unprecedented and the timing is spectacular. So when you go through those, everybody goes, wow, this is making all kinds of sense. Then you summarize. You tell them what you've just told them. Here's the situation that you find yourself in. I've shown you this, 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 and this. Then you go into a simple call to action. Now that call to action might be to join. That call to action might be to learn more. That call to action might be to get some questions answered. That call to action might be to try the product. But this flow, like I said, if we had more time, I could literally write it for you and you would fill in the blanks with your product or your, you know, the answers to some simple questions. But in the meantime, this flow, I'll tell you what happened when I learned this. I can do this full presentation with company specific information in about seven or eight minutes. That's what I learned to be able to do. I could do it in seven or eight minutes, this full presentation in about seven or eight minutes. I could do it in 15 or 20 minutes over coffee or over breakfast or over lunch. I could do it in 30 or 40 minutes uh, at a home presentation or on a Zoom with what you would do today. I could do it in a, a, a one hour presentation, large group presentation. I could do it in an hour and give people more detail. I could even turn this into a three hour training and build just unbelievable belief of the people inside of my team. I learned that this, this could expand or contract depending on the situation. I could do it for a three-way call. I could do it for a training. I could do it anywhere in between. But this flow, I'm just a really big fan of structure. Anytime you have a structure, you do an introduction to capture their interest. You tell your story to build trust and build relationship. You'd walk through the five key elements which nobody can argue with. You summarize this so they understand it in context and then you give them a call to action that helps them understand what's the next step for them. You follow this format and you will crush. You will crush. So Pat, I'm, I'm gonna um, have you come back for a moment and uh, have you give some, some thoughts and comments to this, this little overview. Oh, I love this, Eric, and it is so wicked smart. I hope everybody watching sees the genius in this. He, Eric's using an advanced technique uh, that Scott Adams has done a lot of research on called teaching the criteria. Teaching the criteria, certainly in that middle section, is letting people know all the good things about your company, your products, your support, your opportunity. But you're doing it not as somebody who's selling anything. You're doing it as somebody who's like the wise old sage saying, if I were looking at a company, these are the five things that I would look at. And that, that changes the dynamic in the room. Like when you're trying to sell somebody something, you're one of like a hundred birds saying, pick me, pick me, pick me, pick me. But when you teach the criteria, you rise up above all those little birds saying, pick me, pick me. And you become like Yoda. You become like the one who's giving advice on how to pick a company. And the rule is very simple. The research shows the person who teaches the criteria gets the sale. You don't, if somebody's out there saying, hey, I'll tell you how to pick a good plumber. Here are the things to think about. In the end, you just want to work with that person because he's the one who knows how to pick a good one. And so this is this is sneaky smart, Eric, and I hope everybody sees the genius of it. The intro and the story at the front end, 
the simple call to action, not 11 possibilities here, but a simple call to action on the back end are, are great structure and always there. But the idea of instead of selling your opportunity, instead teach the criteria, which allows you to do it, but not from a sales standpoint, now you're just offering great advice. You're the wise old sage. And so I hope everybody sees the wicked smart nature of this. This is pure genius right here, Eric. And I can see why it has worked well for you and has, has been something that you've been teaching for a while because it, this works. This simply just works. And I will tell you that the key to it is uh, it works, but it duplicates. It works, but other people can use it. It works and you could put it into a, a recorded uh, video. You, it, you know, I, I've literally, first time I organized this, I mean, I, I told it for, I mean, five years. Well, I, I learned it and I taught it. I, I, excuse me, I used it for like three, four years. And then I, I turned it into an audio presentation in 1993, <laughs> a long time ago. And this was audio cassettes. I want you to imagine an audio cassette with that presentation on it and a uh, you know, recorded presentation. And we sold these little audio cassettes for, I think, 35 cents or something, you know, and then people would pass them out to people. It dates me with this audio cassette thing. But I will tell you, we moved in my organization, we moved like a half a million audio cassettes in six months out into the public. And that story was able to be told to all of those people. And since then, I've, I've consulted with companies and we create that structure. I, we've made videos and we create that structure. Um, this is why I call it the perfect presentation. I've never seen anything more effective ever. So like I say, if we had more time, I, I could script it out for you word for, you know, word for word. But in the meantime, at least you have a structure to be able to follow and start paying attention to it, start filling in the blanks of that structure. Any other thoughts before we move on to the getting started presentation? No, I like everything I say. I hope, I hope people are taking what you're teaching and applying it to their company, taking what you're teaching and filling in those blanks. Because this is just a this is just an academic exercise until people actually fill in the blanks and then go out and try it. And like everything else I say, if you wait until you have this perfect, you'll never do it. Fill in the blanks with your company information, with your story, with your call to action, and get out there and try it. It won't be perfect the first time. It'll probably be a little ugly the first time. You'll be nervous. You'll forget half of it. And that's okay, because the next time you do it, you'll forget a little bit less. And the next time you do it, you'll be a little bit smoother. And so this is an academic exercise. Unless you actually try this stuff, Get out there, plug in your information and try it. And this is pure gold. And one thing I will tell you also is like we said at the, at the beginning, some of you were a little bit late to get on. All you got to, if you want to get a free ticket to GoPro 2021, $500 ticket, um, we're going to give away 10 of those today. All you have to do is smash the share button. Um, so smash the share button right now. Let people know that this training exists. And also, I'm just going to tell you, whoever gets, how much value are you going to get if you get more people on your team listening to this training? It's going to be more, right? So get them to listen. You got 24 hours for this to listen before this goes away. Um, but do what you have, have to do to get them to listen. The, that, that presentation pyramid that, that Pat started with was the baseline was story. And then there was the perfect opportunity presentation. And then the third one I want to talk about now is a getting started presentation. Now, make no mistake, when you sign up a new person, you need to do another presentation to that person so they have a better chance of having success in their business. This is not just sign them up and hope for the best. You're not going to have duplication if you do that. If you have to do another presentation, yes, they join, but you have to enroll them. They've signed up, they paid, but they're not involved yet. So I want to give you some and again, we're going to do this in summary form, but I want to give you some fundamental concepts that you need to think about in the presentation that you're going to give with a person who's just joined, okay? A getting started, getting 
started presentation. This has two parts, two parts. Part one is uh, what I would call onboarding. Part two is what I would call launch or launching. This part on the left is getting somebody connected, getting them connected, involved emotionally, their expectations are set, your relationship set, they, they've signed up the right way, they know where to get questions answered, those types of things. This side is helping them get success fast. So you got to be thinking about this presentation in a couple different terms. The first that I want you to understand is the most crucial conversation. And I say conversation, but this is a presentation. Okay? The, the presentation that you need to say to them is going to be packaged in a conversation. And if I'm doing this with Pat as an example, he just joined my business. I'm excited for Pat. He's going to go, but you know, he's he's got big expectations. The most crucial conversation is the following, and I want you to even if you got to go back and rewind and listen to this again because I'm not going to repeat it 15 times and I'm not going to give it to you in exact word for word. Like I said, if we had more time, I would give you this exact getting started process that would be word for word for your company. But here's the crucial conversation. Pat, my goal is to help, oops, my, my objective, my goal, my mission is to help you become independent from me as quickly as possible. For you to be able to build a business on your own without help or advice or guidance or support, that you are self-sufficient. Do you agree that that's a good goal? And make sure that they agree. And they will. And then you need to say, how long would you like it to take to become independent from me? This is the most crucial conversation. My goal is to help you become independent from me as quickly as possible. How long would you like it to take? Okay. If they say yes, they agree that that's a good goal, then they'll give you a time frame. Don't give them the time frame. Ask them to give you the time frame that they would like. And you're going to get a lot of three months, six months, nine months a year. Whatever that number is, you need to start from that moment helping them to fly out of the nest by the time that that date arrives. You come to an agreement that they say nine months, nine months is a good goal. All right, fantastic. So everything we do between now and nine months from now is going to be designed to help you become independent. So this sets up a completely different dynamic from normal network marketing enrollment processes. I'm here to work for you. I'm here to help you. I'm here to do everything for you. I get paid if you have success. And it creates this dynamic that's totally dependent and enabled and entitled. And it's, it's screwed up. You need to say, look, this is your business. My objective, my job is for you to become independent from me in case, God forbid, something happens to me. How long you want that to take? Nine months. Fantastic. Everything we do is going to be designed to help you become independent nine months from now. Now, the, the relationship is different, the dynamic is different, and the assignments are going to be different because they're going to be designed around independence. You understand? The most crucial conversation in network marketing. Next thing you need to let them know is you need to set expectations. The crucial conversation is setting expectations, but you need to set more expectations and say, listen, like any entrepreneurial venture, this is an emotional journey. There's gonna be ups and downs. 
There's going to be challenges. You know, I, I also want to congratulate you for making the decision, but you know, or if you've never been an entrepreneur before, I'm sure you could assume that this might be emotional. There's going to be some ups and downs. My goal is to help you become strong and independent, but I would like you to tell me if you're having a bad time or a bad day, and I'm going to know, here's how I'm going to know you're having a bad time or a bad day. You're not calling me. You're not showing up on Zooms. You're not showing up on the live. You're not, you're not being close to the fire. I'm going to know that something happened. And here's what I need to know from you. When that occurs and you go dark, you, you, you start ghosting me, how do you want me to handle that? Do you want me to just bother you and remind you why you did this in the first place? Or do you want me to leave you alone? And they'll say, no, I want you to remind me why I did this in the first place. Fantastic. So you're setting up a working relationship, a dynamic. You're congratulating them for getting involved. You're giving them this crucial conversation. You're setting expectations. There's going to be ups and downs. Anytime you try to change your life, the universe is going to test you. All hell's going to break loose. As soon as you go tell everybody you're going to change your life. Not everybody in your family and friends is going to support you. You just need to let people know. And then the third big area is get them connected. The crucial conversation, the expectations, get them connected. Here's where you go get your questions answered so you don't need to ask me. Here's where the Zooms are. Here's the, the team Facebook page. Here's the website. Here's where you get your tools. Here's the products that you need to be using on a regular basis. Here's all the stuff. And why are you giving them that stuff? Why are you giving it to them? In, instead of them asking you, why? Because you want them to be independent. You're starting up at the beginning, giving them a toolbox of, that will allow them to become independent. And then number four, and this is very summarized in comparison to what, like I say, if I was coaching you in a small group, it would be a different conversation. We'd be, we'd be literally creating step-by-step -step checklists and exactly how to do this. But for now, just in summary, crucial conversation, setting expectations, making sure they're connected. And number four, here's how we're going to interact, you and I, Pat. Here's how we're going to interact. Assignments. There's three things that I'm going to be looking for, Pat, in me spending time working with you, helping you become independent. Three things that I think are vital for a person to become a network marketing professional. Number one, they need to be willing. I can't force you to be successful, Pat. That's on you. I can't force you to do it. Number two, they need to be coachable. I can't help you if you won't listen. And number three, you need to be hungry. And I, you can't teach hunger. You're either hungry or you're not. And guess how I'm going to find out if you're willing, coachable, and hungry? I'm going to give you some assignments, Pat, that are designed to help you move your business forward, and they're designed to help you become more independent. And I'm going to know... And we're going to adjust those assignments. Let's, let's say you tell me, hey, I want to change my life. I want to be independent in 30 days. Well, I'm going to give you some pretty aggressive assignments then. And maybe you're just trying to speak it into existence. I, I give you an assignment, you don't do it. I'm not going to give up on you, Pat. If you don't follow through on that first assignment, I'm just going to lower the difficulty of that assignment until we find your fear point. And then once you do it, then I'm going to ramp it up. You know, a little click at a time, like a thermostat. We'll just slowly ramp it up to build your wing strength so when you do, do jump out of the nest, you're good. So it's just going to be little assignments here and there, little assignments here and there to help you have a breakthrough. But again, my goal is this. It's going to be ups and downs. Here's how to get connected. I'm going to use assignments as my number one tool to find out. Now, here's the thing. I would also tell you, I learned a long time ago, Pat, to not fall in love with potential. I think you have a lot of potential, but I'm not going to fall in love with it. 
if I give you assignments and you just refuse to do any of them, I'm not going to do this for you and I'm not going to chase you. I'm going to wish you well and hope you keep using the products. Some people join our business and they're tourists. And that's okay. Every business likes its tourists. We hope you keep using the products. But if you want to build a business, this is our working relationship. This little conversation, this presentation, how valuable would this have been if somebody did this with you, what I just did? How valuable would it have been if you did it with every single person that you ever sponsored in your network marketing business? This little conversation. Game over. Total different experience. Versus either sign them up and send them to the wolves or fall in love with their potential, do, them for, do everything for everybody, be everybody's slave. Neither of those things is fun. So this is a summary. We can, I could give you more, but we don't have time for that. The other side of this is the launch of their business. This is the emotional setup. And this is the launch. Success loves speed. Work out a plan to help them get to your core rank quickly. Work out a plan to help them get their first customer. Sign up their first distributor. Um, have a product success story. Launching. Focus on 30 to 90 days. That's your focus. 30 to 90 days. Their first 30 days, 60 days, 90 days. Create a game plan. And what are you going to use in order to be able to map that game plan out? Assignments. You're going to set expectations. You're going to say, our goal is to help you become independent, but let's, get, let's start by giving you an assignment. to Let's see what we can get done in the first week, the first month. Let's see if we can help you really ramp this thing up. Okay? So this is the getting started presentation. And again, if we had time, I would map it out and give you all the checklists and everything else. But I think you could maybe agree that you could map out a getting started presentation for your organization, for your people, even just for yourself, for the next person that you sponsor. You could map this out based upon what we just discussed, okay? So this is a, a master's class. I'm telling you, what I just shared with you in the last 15 minutes is this is the key to duplication. If you've been struggling with duplication, people have not been duplicating within your organization, you can sign them up, but they don't do anything. This is the key, okay? So Pat, what are your thoughts before we go into uh, the next category? Uh, I love this because no longer are people gonna have to start with a blank sheet of paper. They've got this template. They have this structure to help that first conversation, that enrollment conversation or getting started conversation happen. And on the left-hand side of that, Eric, I just think of the cost of not doing those four things. Think of the cost of not doing those four things. If you don't have that first crucial conversation, you change the dynamic and they are always dependent upon you. And they never even have as a goal to be independent from you because you're always going to be there. You've just created another job for yourself. Think of the cost of not setting expectations for them of them not realizing that there's gonna be emotional ups and downs. Because the first time they get a no, or the second time they get a no, or the first time they go into the Facebook group and they see all their cohorts got new customers this week and I didn't get new customers this week, they're gonna crash and burn if you don't set expectations. Think of the cost of not connecting them. Oh, and then I love that last question. How do you want me to interact with you if you ghost me on your bad days? Because then you're not the neg. You've agreed what that interaction will look like and they don't have to hide from you or not return your calls or your text or your direct messages. How to get your own answers, that third one, how to get connected and get your own answers so all information doesn't have to flow for you, through you. Think of the cost of not doing that. Think of how many texts you will get, how many messages you will get if you don't do that. And then setting a, a, a framework around the assignments and, and, and framing the assignments in the right way so you have reasonable expectations and you understand the flow is going to go. Uh, I just think each of those has a cost. 
And if you just wing it, because I know a lot of people, their attitude is, you know, I could just wing this. And I know a lot of people started with a blank sheet of paper and wrote their own. And if you're missing any of these four, there is a real cost to that, a cost to your time, a cost to your money, a cost to your impact, a cost to your team size, a cost to your happiness and your success. And so uh, that left-hand side, man, that is, that is pure gold. And I hope people can evaluate what they have been doing in this situation and see which of those they're missing. And it may be all four. And, and man, if you just want to put in the chat, like I've done none of this, I've done some of this, or I've done all of this. If you want to put that into the comments, and if you've done none of this, don't be embarrassed. Don't be shy about that. You don't know what you don't know. And Eric, I hope uh, nobody walks away from today feeling guilty. I think one, one possible response to the genius you've shared in the last 51 minutes is, I suck at this and I'm, I feel guilty. Well, that's not what we want. Well, we, you know, you don't know what you don't know. And so I just want people to say, I am where I am. I've done what I've done, but moving forward, I have a choice. Moving forward, I can continue to give the opportunity presentation, not teaching those five elements. And moving forward, I can continue to do the getting started presentation. Well, even if I did one, a lot of people don't do one. But even if I did one, I didn't do those four crucial things on the left. I just think, don't be embarrassed about where you've been in the past. Just plant a stake in the ground today and say, moving forward, I'm going to be better. And because of that, I will have a better team. I will have better revenue and, and things are going to get better. I hope, I hope nobody walks away from this feeling guilty. I hope they see that this is an opportunity to make change because of what you've taught us here today, Eric. Yeah. It's, and, and listen, I, I would say the same thing because I'm watching the comments too, uh, same way you are, is don't be all despondent about the loss of opportunity that of people that came in before and maybe you didn't give them the best uh, getting started presentation. This is all a journey. You're doing the best you can with what you got. But now, as of this moment, now you have a responsibility because now you know. To, to know and not take action to get better now is now that's on you. Up until now, it's not so much on you, but now it's on you. You got to get better. You have a, it's, it's an awesome responsibility to be a leader. It's an awesome responsibility to be put in a position of leadership. And I think it's, it's a shame to have that opportunity and not step into it. So now that you know, you need to create a better structure for people to be able to have a better chance at success. You onboarding and launching those people is one of the most sacred responsibilities that you have, okay? Doing it right, not creating entitlement or, or codependence or any of those types of things is really critical. Now, the, the, the fourth area in this presentation pyramid, tomorrow we're going to be talking about... Um, the per, a keynote presentation, a signature talk. You might not even think that that's possible. I promise you it is. And, and when you learn how to give it with these, pe with these people offering this, this uh, value for free, it's going to blow your mind. But let me talk to you about skill-based training. Um, skill-based training is you want to create more duplication, more freedom, um, Understand this, the best trained team wins. The best trained team wins. Put that into the comments. The best trained team wins. So if you want to have the best trained team, let me give you a very, I'm going to just give you an example, okay, of this, because we can't go deep today on this, because uh, I, I want to do this, answer a few questions, and we have a, a major kind of assignment for you, a challenge for you to be able to step into today before we close up. The, the, once I realize that the best trained team wins, it's not all about hope, and it's all, not all about hype. It is about skills, ultimately. You got to be competent, ultimately. Your team has to be competent, ultimately. They got to become independent, ultimately. How do they become independent? They only become independent by being skilled. If you're the only skilled one, 
You can't have more independence within the organization or more duplication. So when it comes to skills, if you list, come up with a list of the fundamental skills that need to be trained within your organization, what are those skills? Finding prospects, inviting prospects, presenting, following up, closing, getting people started, promoting events. Leadership is a skill, right? Lots of skills that you need to develop. And then two, why is this skill important? Why is this skill important? What you have to create in people's minds is what is the payoff if I learn this skill, what is the payoff? And then four, what is the process for developing this skill? And then five, what are the rewards for people within our organization that actually do develop the skill? So this is aspirational, this is tangible. So let me give you one in, in, uh, as an example, because we're talking about presentation now, right? So I'll tell you a quick story. I had a friend of mine who was struggling with duplication. She lived in Memphis, Tennessee, building an organization, and they were doing weekly opportunity presentations and local presentations and trainings and everything else. But she did everything. She was exceptional. She's exceptional to this day but she did all the presentations, okay? And she was stuck. If, if she didn't do the presentation of the training, nobody would show up, people wouldn't respond. She, she had no life, she had no duplication, she had no freedom. So in this particular instance, we, we took a look at the skills that were exhibiting in her organization and she had a huge gap in presentation skills. She was just, just not in, in her team. So presentation skill was identified. Why was this such a big deal? Because if she didn't have as many present presenters within her organization, she didn't have any freedom. She had no duplication. She had no confidence. They were just all dependent little, you, know, you, you ever see those pictures of the, the little baby birds in the nest with their mouths open and mama bird is dropping food into their mouths? She was mama bird and her whole team was just like, ah, with the mouths open. They were not independent flying out of the nest. So we understood why. And then I explained to her the payoff. What's the payoff if we can teach your team, not everybody on your team, but a, a people who are willing, coachable and hungry on your team to become great presenters? What's the payoff for you? What's the payoff for them? So the payoff was independence, time, freedom, duplication, growth and income. The payoff for the team was confidence, more productivity, more income, more growth, more rank advancement. I mean, the payoff just became obvious. So we laid out the payoff. Then we came up with a process. I said, I want you to create a presenter uh, training program in Memphis, Tennessee, where I want you to train people how to become, how to do these five great, five presentations like we're talking about over these three days. I want you to teach them how to do a presentation. I teach them how to tell their story. So here was the process. I, I want you to take inventory. Who's willing on the team? Who would like to become a world-class presenter inside of the team? Take inventory. Whoever raises their hands, then I want you to connect with those people. And I want, to get, I want you to give them a process to learn how to do that. And she did. It was like a 10-week process for people to become skilled at the different presentations. Now, a lot of people raised their hands. Not everybody went through the whole 10 weeks, but enough did that by the end of that, now mind you, at the beginning of this process that when I was coaching her, she was the only present presenter with competence. At the end of this process, she had 30 people that she would trust to put in front of the entire company, 30. What do you think happened to her income? What do you think happened to her duplication? What do you think happened to the confidence? What do you think happened to her freedom? Skyrocketed. 
just went crazy through the process. And then we rewarded the people who came out the other side through recognition, through incentives, through trophies and certificates and everything else for becoming skilled. And then they duplicated that process. She, she went on to become a multi-million dollar a year earner, but she was stuck at like $150,000 a year prior to this. But prior to learning how to duplicate the presentation power within her organization, totally stuck. So on any skill, if your organizations, if they're terrible at promoting events or closing or, or whatever it happens to be, we're using presentation as this example, list the skill, why is this important? What's the payoff? What's the process? And then what's the reward through your organization? You follow this process, everything's gonna change for you. Now, I'm gonna to come to Pat in a moment, but I, but I, I wanna give every single person that's listening to this a, the challenge for today, the challenge for today. And then Pat, maybe you and I can answer some questions and move forward. But the challenge for today is, I would like you, let, yesterday we had the hashtag my story. Today, the hashtag is my commitment. I want you to post on your timeline and also inside of the GoPro Challenge Facebook page with the hashtag my commitment. What is your commitment to being world class when it comes to being a presenter? I want you to, to tell the world what is your commitment? What is your commitment level? What are you prepared to do? What, what sacrifices are you prepared to make? What dedication are you prepared to bring? What grit and facing your fear are you prepared to go through in order to become on the other side and become a world-class presenter? I will say this, and it, it'll sound like bragging, but my commitment, one word, hashtag my commitment, one word. I want you to put right out or even better film a video of your commitment and post it. And this will sound like bragging, but it's, it's meant as an example. I was the most fearful person you would ever imagine um, to get up in front of people and, put, and, and risk public embarrassment. Today, I'm one of the highest paid speakers in the world. Non-celebrity. I mean, I'm not going to be a former president or I'm not going to be, you know, some Hollywood celebrity. But take those out. One of the highest in the world. Guess where that started? Network marketing. It gave me a vehicle to practice. It gave me a vehicle to learn. It gave me a vehicle to get better. And I will tell you, every one of you have a story to tell, to be able to build your business, to be able to build your brand, to be able to impact the world, to be able to, to go out there and create a legacy. You have a story to tell. Okay, so I want to know what, what is your commitment? What are you prepared to do in order to be able to learn this? Why do I tell you all that? Because I want you to understand the payoff. The payoff in becoming a world-class presenter is spectacular. It's phenomenal. It's unbelievable. So, Pat, I want to go to you. Have you summarize what we talked about here? And maybe we can ask, ask, uh, answer some questions. And then if you can tell them, because I can't tell them as good as you can, you can tell them what they're about to learn tomorrow at 11 a.m. Pacific time, what they're going to learn in day three of this presentation challenge. Yeah, absolutely. What a day today. Holy cow. Yesterday, we talked about your story. And by the way, there's still time. If you haven't posted your story yet, you can still post it with the hashtag my story. You have until the end of the day today. And on Saturday, we're going to do something really special. We're going to pick 10 of those stories, maybe 20. We'll see how many we have time for. And uh, we're going to give them an opportunity on Saturday. You aren't going to believe. we got a bonus day coming up on Saturday. So I'm super excited about that. Today, we covered the middle three in this pyramid, the opportunity presentation. And 
I tell you, if you haven't hit the share button yet, like, I don't know what you are waiting for. If you have team members and you do not share with them from the five minute mark to the 35 minute mark in today's training, I don't know if, I don't know what you're waiting for because this is pure gold right here, that presentation. The getting started presentation, I don't think I've ever seen in the chat so many people type in, no one ever taught me this. I didn't know this before. And remember, we aren't doing that to make you feel guilty. You, you, you are not responsible for what you didn't know in the past, but now there are no excuses. You've heard it. And your team members will hear it if you smash that share button and tell them to watch this training from the 30 minute mark to the 55 minute mark. And then higher level skills training, um, really gonna create the duplication that you want, list the essential skills. And so that was all that we covered today and now tomorrow. Tomorrow, we're gonna talk about the signature talk. The signature talk is like next level. The signature talk is something that's going to explode this thing. What if people didn't view you as somebody who represented a network marketing company? What if people viewed you as a subject area expert in a particular topic or a particular subject? What if people actually hired you to speak at events, small events, local events for 10 women here and 15 parents here and 20 people here, or bigger events, conferences, webinars, workshops. What if people hired you to be an expert and to speak on a topic? And during the course of that topic, you could mention solutions to them, but they viewed you as an expert in this area. You could get in front of not one or two people each week, you could get in front of hundreds of people each week. And here's one more secret you may not have thought of. You might even get paid to be that expert. You might even get paid to present. But I would just do it for free for the opportunity to be positioned as an expert in a particular area. We're gonna show you how to put together a talk. And if you are willing, if you are coachable, if you are hungry to get in front of more people and you are hungry to get in front of new people, this signature talk is gonna be one of the greatest marketing tools you've ever had. It's gonna create a predictable flow of new people hearing your message, learning about you, it's gonna set up not one or two conversations, but dozens of conversations. When implemented correctly, your signature talk could be the greatest growth factor you have in 2021. And we're gonna show you exactly how to do that tomorrow. We're gonna to walk you step-by-step step through the process. This is next level. This is, this is beyond just telling your story, which is a super huge skill. This is beyond the three presentations that we covered today that you have to master and you have to get good at. This is for an elite group of people who want to blow the lid off this thing and really make the world their customer base. This is the signature talk. And Eric, I know your signature talk and, and being viewed as an expert in the different areas that you are and being even paid to speak uh, to do some of this stuff. That's really, that's when it goes from uh, slow growth, slow and steady growth to this explosive growth like you never believed possible. Yeah, it is. And uh, what I'm excited, first of all, I'm proud of everybody for being here yesterday and telling your story. I'm proud of you for being here today. Here, here's my chicken scrawl behind me, the, the hashtag my commitment. What is your commitment to becoming world class at the skill? And, and if you don't think that it's possible for you, I promise you it is. I just promise you it is. If, if the payoff is strong enough, you'll get, you'll get through your fear. And we're hoping that you see the payoff here. And, and then you're willing to make the sacrifice necessary to do what you need to do. So um, Pat talked, I, I have one more surprise for you before we, we sign off. Tomorrow, we're gonna go through this signature talk, okay? 11 a.m. Pacific time, do not miss it. It's gonna be amazing. On Saturday, Pete and Pat are gonna be coaching people on their story live in front of the whole world so people will be able to see how you can refine your own story. It's gonna be amazing. But on Friday, on Friday, I'm going to do at 11 a.m. Pacific time, another bonus day. I have six of my um, top friends that have learned how to become world-class presenters in network marketing that we're going to have a round table talking about it. Uh, I've got Stormy Wellington, Emily Vavra, Darnell Self, Tim Sales, Lauren Lahav, and a couple others that I haven't committed to yet because I haven't, I, I was just reaching out to them right before we started this thing. Uh, six or seven of them, that are just going to be sharing their secrets on Friday. So just know that this is kind of presentation week and we're going to 
we're going to crush this thing. So tomorrow, do not miss it, 11 a.m. Pacific time. And uh, then we're going to continue to give you some extra bonuses. But what Pat, you know, Pat, what do you normally charge for, for the coaching that you're going to do tomorrow? Uh, the coaching we're going to do tomorrow, we've charged people $35,000 for uh, people, companies routinely bring us in uh, much higher than that at six figures and seven figures. Uh, and we're going to share it all tomorrow. We're going to go step by step through the process. And once, once you learn this, I mean, picture a day when you know exactly what to say on a stage and you're giving a presentation on a topic. Picture a day when you finish speaking and you have 30 direct messages in your inbox before you even finish the presentation of people who want to have conversations with you. And picture a day when every time you want to have this massive part of growth, you can go up on a stage and present on a topic. You're going to be viewed completely differently when you become an expert on a topic. It's going to be one of the greatest marketing tools you'll ever have. I have the coolest friends, uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm grateful that I can bring them in and call in favors to, to have them bring value to my friends. Uh, so anyway, everybody, have a great day. Post your commitment, written form or video form, on, on becoming world class at this. I'll see you tomorrow, 11 a.m. Pacific time. It's going to be epic. Make sure your team sees this before it's gone in 24 hours. All right. See you later, everybody. Mwah. I was thinking this was the way to go And you put up your puppet show I say cheers to life No, I'll be no good man Just leave me alone did last night what i do remember that it was real real life talks about me are never good i don't live like the way that i should oh well i'm in for some fun tonight Just leave me alone.